Old World 2 is a total overall mod that brings the world of Fallout to Hearts of Iron 4. Hearts of Iron 4 is a notoriously difficult game to master, but at least it has a tutorial to get you started. Old World Blues unfortunately does not, but this video aims to change that. I have created a complete beginner's basic training tutorial to give players both new and old a head start to help you conquer the wasteland. So when starting a new game, you will be presented with a list of regions that the wasteland has been broken up into purely to help make it easier to select what nation you want to play. When you've selected your chosen nation you'll be given a brief history about it as well as your starting national spirits and some of the things you can expect from your focus tree. You will then get the option of changing your difficulty as well as customizing some game rules. I'll be playing this on regular, otherwise known as Average Joe. And welcome to the Wasteland. Now when starting any new game you'll be presented with this pip boy which if you read will give you more information about the regions and some unique mechanics in the game and you can always refer back to it by clicking on the help button at any point during the game. Now before we get started with anything else, let me explain the user interface. On this top row here, as is traditional with most strategy games, we have a list of what we can call resources. Starting off we have political power, stability and war support our usable manpower for our military as well as a total number of factories in our nation. Energy cells is the fuel that all your vehicles and some weapons will use. We then have our logistics and the amount of convoys our nation has. Lastly in this top row we have command power, army, navy and air force experience which will be gained during fighting or training. In the top right we have our speed control, we also have an ability to change the music as well as see an overview of our Army, Navy and Air Force. Additionally we have the ability to speed up the game, the current date as well as our war tension. Down in the bottom right we have a collection of shortcut keys which will show you various things such as your land map, naval, air force, supply, your compliance, etc. Now with that covered, it is time to start setting up our nation and the first four things I want to look at is construction, my production of weapon and naval equipment, starting the research of some new technologies and selecting my national focus. So construction first. This screen will give you the list and abilities to construct various buildings, airfields, naval dockyards etc. Old World Blues does not give you the ability to construct new roads as in Vanilla Hoi 4. But I'm going to start off with building a nice even balance of civilian and armed workshops and I will be focusing in building in my states that have the highest infrastructure as indicated by this road symbol as they will be built slightly faster than anywhere else. With that taken care of, let's have a look at my production queue. This is where you produce all your equipment for your Army, Air Force and Navy. Uh, when starting with some nations, not all your arms workshops will be allocated to producing equipment. So you need to make sure that they all are so you're not wasting any time. And with that sorted out, it's time to look at research. Now different nav nations get 
different amount of research slots and some additional ones can also be unlocked using your national focus tree some people will advise that you focus on engineering and industry at the start of the game I disagree with this as having the technological advantage in your military can be a major difference in winning and losing so I will be setting up a nice even spread covering everything that needs to be covered in the beginning of the game with research done let's move on to the national focus tree now your national focus tree will be what guides your nation towards its ultimate goal and when starting a new nation I always advise taking a few minutes to go through all the focuses to see what is most important to you so you can make a priority an option you do have is to search for certain things such as war goals so that you can know via your focus tree what focuses will give you claims to declare war on any of your neighboring states you're also able to look for focuses that will give you workshops for example so if you are short you'll be able to prioritize getting those in every nation your first few focuses helps determine the history of your nation up until this point so I'll be starting off with our founding why how old the Maxim was the founder of the Brotherhood as a whole each chapter has its own founders those that spread the word of the dangers of technology farther into the wasteland who were our founders so at the end of this focus I'll get an event called our founding all right now let's look at setting up your army now you do also have the ability of using a air force and navy in old world blues but your army remains the most important part of your military as it is the only type that can actually capture the required victory points to ensure victory now you will use generally two types of units during your game the first will be a standard type of unit which will be you be using to hold the line and only attack when it's possible and then your special forces or breakthrough units which will be your main attacking force now you have the ability to customize these army groups using the template guide and two basic rules I want to share with you is to always keep your organization above 40 as this is the ability for your unit to stay in the fight whether on the attack or on the defense and to keep your combat width at 20 so when you start have a look at what your templates are and see what you need to do to get them up to a combat width of 20 now why do I say 20 and no other number every tile has a combat width of 60 and the ability to attack from another for sorry from an additional direction adds another 20 onto that front line so therefore combat, combat width of 20 is the perfect number to use you can use a combat width of 10 but then your supply usage will be a lot higher it is also possible to use combat width above 20 but then when attacking from an additional front that unit will be overstacked and will be given a combat penalty when fighting moving back to the recruitment tab set your reinforcements supply trucks and garrison units to high priority to make sure that they will always be resupplied first and always have a 
least one unit in training at all times. Now to create your army and army groups, you want to go to your undersigned divisions, hold down the shift key and left click to give the entire list of all the divisions you have. In Old World Blues, without any modifying traits, the maximum number of arm units you can have in an army is 20. And I'm then going to assign a unit leader and then a commanding officer for my army group. Now for this tutorial I've elected to play as the Washington Brotherhood as they are in the unique position at starting the game at war with two neighboring countries which means I need to get them ready to fight. So to do that I'm going to set up various front lines. Now another possibility what you could do is to instead of having a single army which I'm going to issue multiple front lines you could have multiple smaller armies and give them individual front lines I prefer to give one army multiple front lines as it will help my unit leader gain more experience more quickly so I've set the whole army onto the large front line with the accumulation here but I will not be initially attacking this direction they will be defending so I'll be taking units off this line and assigning them to the front lines I have with Mount Olympus as they are the ones I'll be attacking first once I've gone through all my tutorial tips so to create additional front lines I will select again and then I will select the units I want to use by double clicking and then assigning them to that front line. My additional fronts I need to watch out for is these two little coastline crossings here. Something that you need to be aware of in Old World Blues is there are multiple of these little front lines and if you do not select properly you run the risk of being encircled by units sneaking through from that direction so the situation I have now is that all the front lines with my enemies have been covered by various units this line here in the east will initially hold as well as the river crossings here south of Capitol Hill and my power army units which are positioned here will attack and do the work of con conquering my or the enemy's victory points now to do this you need to set up an offensive line so I'm going to select those units again select the option for an offensive line and using right click I'm going to drag a line now this is the plan that my units will follow in moving to the objective you can let the AI generated battle plan run automatically although you can also manually move your units as you want to. I will be doing both of that when it comes to the practical side of this tutorial. Now as for your Air Force, I would advise not using the gliders and balloons that you'll get from the basic air tech as these are single use only so you'll be going through a lot of manpower and equipment. The only exception of this is if you are only have basic air tech available. Instead rather wait until you have researched and started producing your intermediate tech air force 
and when you have the planes available you can select an airfield and create the squadrons that you need. I suggest first focusing on fighters to keep the skies clear of any enemy aircraft and then on close air support to support your infantry. Anything after that is a bonus. Another thing you can do is instead of giving them air zones to work in, you can actually attach them to your armies so that they will actually follow them around the wasteland which saves you a lot of micromanagement. Now at for using your navy, the in Old World Blues they generally have two main tasks and that is patrolling the waterways to hopefully stop a naval invasion and then supporting your own naval invasions. Unfortunately I do not start with any dockyards or naval vessels. If you do start and have between three and five dockyards then I suggest only using the medium ships which are effectively cruisers as these have the right balance of firepower as well as speed. If you have more than five dockyards however then you can go out and have a full navy of mixed with the light medium and heavy ships and be ready to take on any other navy that a nation can field against you. So with my nation set up as well as my military I want to go through a few more things before we carry on. First of all the political screen. Now this is where you can have a proper look at your national spirits as well as hire various advisors and change some economic laws. We then have events and decisions. Now events are little things that happen throughout the course of the game and take the form of a pop-up notification in the center of the screen they'll either give you a few choices to make or simply to acknowledge them. The sh decisions are a series of long and short term goals that will cost you either political power or caps. Now Old World Blues does have some unique decisions from Vanilla such as a scavenging program as well as a organization marketplace for the purchase of weapons. What I prefer to do is only turn on the decisions that I actually want to take and turning off the ones I do not. This way I will only have an alert come up at the top of, top of my screen when a decision actually needs to be taken. Now an intelligence agency is not critical to play Old World Blues but it can be very useful. One of the most useful things you can have your operatives do is actually root out resistance in your newly captured territories as well as using your cryptology department to decrypt the ciphers of your enemies. Both the active and passive boosts will give you a very nice advantage when going to war. Diplomacy is where you have the ability to communicate with other nations out in the wasteland as, which you'll be able to do things such as sending volunteers or leasing equipment or even declaring war and or although I'm not going to do it surrendering. Another useful thing is the intel ledger which will give you a brief overview of all the intelligence that you have gathered about other nations. Now if you're ever short on any resources for your nation the trade window is where you can trade a civilian workshop for some resources from another nation. I do not advise doing this until you have at least 15 civilian workshops so that your construction is not negatively affected 
And please do remember that you can get additional resources from certain advisors and technologies. We then have logistics and supply. Now, as is traditional, green is good, red is bad. This shows the amount of equipment needed by my forces in the field and in training. Something to know that equipment is always supplied from your capital outwards via either supply hubs or naval bases, no matter where the equipment is actually produced. Now, if you are at peace and you see that you have a large amount of equipment stockpiled, I do advise not lowering your production of that too much as you'll be very surprised how fast you can burn through certain equipment. Now as for doctrines, Old World Blues is unique in there are two different doctrine groups. The first one is a resurgible type that focuses on one of five fighting styles that will affect your army as well as Air Force and Navy in some respect. The second group is a amount of purchasable sorry purchasable buffs for your army navy and and air force and then we have two unique mechanics to old world blues the first being technology levels as well as reward technologies now reward technologies are given for accomplishing certain national focuses or events in the game and technology levels is a split of, te of level technology throughout the game. Certain nations only have access to a certain level of technology. Some of these can also be increased during national focuses. For example, I have the ability to create sophisticated infantry and support equipment but not sophisticated vehicles or robots. Lastly, we have the cap system. Now, essentially, every nation earns caps each month. And this is affected by any trade nodes that you may have which will increase this amount. Now, what would you spend all this money on? Well, you spend it on things like army wages, as well as equipment that can be purchased from different organizations, as well as certain decisions. And now it's time to put all this theory that I have explained to you into practice. So I'm going to increase my game clock, give my army the order to attack, and put what I've done into practice. All right, so this is an example of an event, and this one specifically covers the uh, caps and economy that I uh, spoke about a few minutes ago. Now, there are three examples here. This one will open up uh, an event which will help you dealing with if you have any performance issues. This will open up a dedicated tutorial to the caps. And this one will continue the game and give me a thousand bottle caps, which since everyone starts at zero, is a good place to start. Now, this event will always come up within the first week of the game. If you do click to carry on going forward, but they want to read up on it later, you can always go to the help and go through mechanics and caps. And my first focus is completed. So now I need to choose who my founders were. So I can either say scribes, which will give me an extra 5% stability, or 
paladins which will give me an extra 5% war support now when deciding what, which one you want to do it's always useful just to hold your mouse over and I will, you can see that my base stability is 35% and what having a high stability gives me so currently having it so low is affecting my political power gain my factory output, my dockyard output, my caps income and the resistance in my occupied territories and my war support by being in an offensive war I've got decreased mobilization speed recruitable population my just justify wartime goal has gone up etc and while I am war at, sorry while I am at war my stability goes down by 10% now I want to keep this above 50 and there are some other ways that I can raise my stability so I'm going to choose paladins and we can now see the difference that being about 50% there's a lot more green now for my next focus for our interim each chapter of the brotherhood had its own priorities some focus on collecting the powerful weapons of the old world while some prioritize industrial machinery and tools what did we focus on? so we have that given and also some of my troops are now in position so I'm going to select these two infantry units and give them a manual attack order to attack there and I will tell these two that once they've arrived here by pressing shift they will then carry on as well so this is known as a m doing a manual attack order wh whereas my paladin units here are following the battle plan that has been laid out for them so that is focus number two complete the bean ones are a nice short seven days I need to now decide what my uh, priority was and I can choose either between getting free to civilian workshops or arms workshops now if you are playing a nation that you know won't be going to war within the first year I would suggest choosing civilian workshops if this is your option but since I am at war I want more arms workshops so I will focus on weapons and choose my next focus which will be our future we have learned plenty in the years that are now behind us we must now use that experience and make the preparations for the many years that are in front of us and I'll get another event our future now something that's happened here as my troops have moved forward now two divisions have been allocated to this front and only one is here so I want to make sure that there are two on this line so I'm just going to select two put them there and make so this unit will now go here but I'm going to force them again manually to attack in this direction okay so that's the last of my development focuses done and now I need to select what I want to do for our future and in this case I have a choice between increasing my factory output by 10% or my resource production which will boost both a lot, quite a lot of things now both of these can be increased uh, during your uh, three technologies but for now this will give me a bigger boost so I'm going to choose I will gather more from the wasteland and now I move over to the meat and potatoes of the of the focus tree and the first one I'm going to choose is our goal uh, because it will give me an extra 100 political power as well as 5% stability and war support so the brotherhood's ideology is straightforward we desire a world in which the recklessness of man cannot be ena enabled by the tools he wields a world in which atrocities aren't committed for the sake of scientific progress this is why we confiscate technology and destroy that which we cannot confiscate all of our duties are for the good of mankind as a whole now there's some f a few more alerts 
at the top of the screen so I want to deal with all of those first is I've been told I have free military factories this is what I got from the previous focus so I'm going to use one of them on basic caravan equipment so I can get my logistics back up to speed and that means I have one more left now to make sure that this is allocated properly what I suggest you do is go to your logistics screen and see which one is in red and you can see new deployments that is in training and this now needs reinforcements for both my garrison and my units and for deployment so infantry equipment in this uh, is actually more important so that factory is going to go there now I've earned some caps so I'm also going to purchase some guns for 15,000 caps which will help take care of the equipment I'm missing for my garrisons and then last but not least I have a decision to make and that is to begin a sca scavenging program because I now have enough bottle caps to actually do it so select that okay, I found myself in quite a nice little situation in that I have now isolated the units on this little peninsula and I have set all five of these units to now attack to keep them encircled and wipe them out once this is done these front lines will disappear and these troops will get allocated by the AI automatically to one of my front lines another thing I have is I've now got 30 command power which will enable me to give my commanding officer some traits so one thing I want to go over is be very careful for your unit leader traits to read what they give bonuses to for example pain train bonus works on heavy special forces that's power armor the sniper works on light special special forces that will be your rangers etc they do not affect each other so since there's power armor in my army selecting sniper will not affect them in any way so I'm going to use pain train and then savage leader for the extra 10% breakthrough alright so I was able to conquer enough victory points to uh, defeat Mount Olympus so now I can move on to the peace conference for this part of the war you have five various options here where you can make demands taking state adds to your country you can liberate this is not an option right now uh, this would be available for example if the another country conquered me after this war they could then liberate Mount Olympus I can puppet them which means they stay as a nation but they effectively work for me I can change the government which doesn't really connect them to me in any way and I can take the Navy so I am going to select all so I'll take all these states into myself but I'm also going to take their Navy as well so I can start building my own so once that is done I can submit my demands and confirm and exit now because there's still another war going on this means that uh, if the other nation by some miracle defeats me this uh, may be contested but that's not going to happen and there I have taken whole of Mount Olympus so now I can check and see there are no red exclamation marks which means all my units have automatically been allocated to this front line and I'm going to create a new offensive line doing only what I th the shortest is possible so we're going to leave it just like that and I have some units in position already so I'm going to give another attack order 
as you can see our units are really starting to move in and conquer territory where it is if you want to see a s quick summary of how the war is going you can select this here and it will now tell you that I have 16 units going up between 4 and 14 how many factories they have and how many deaths have been caused on each side and then what your enemy or yourselves progress towards defeat is so I can see here I'm ready to a third of the way towards defeating them and now just by chance I have another event that's popped up a song from the front Brotherhood forces has fought heroically against our enemies and one of our soldiers has composed a little poem from the front we could pay this without the nation to rally the nation to the cause now we have John's other make sure everybody listens and gain a base 5% more support or I'd rather have the ink spots which means I'll get more political power I generally always choose this one but you can choose whichever one you think will benefit you the most and there I have another national focus completed now it's given me a large boost of political power so I'm going to hire an advisor I'm not going to get any of these at the top instead this is one of my favorite uh, advisors to get for Old World Blues is the Golden Gecko as it will increase my political power gain by 5% add f another 5% onto my stability and give me an extra 2.5 cap a thousand caps every single month so I'll be using that there then my navy that I have I've not done any anything with it yet because I currently do not have any dockyards to repair my ships if they get damaged but just to show you how to hire an admiral most nations do not start with one so you'll get a blank slate doesn't cost you any command power and I will get Admiral Camus Davis so this is a completely random trait that you get and they generally always start at with one in all their stats so they will just stay here only once I have a dockyard to repair them will I actually start doing anything with them for my next focus now I'm going to move away from this branch and move on to our might which is the more military section for the Washington Brotherhood so the Brotherhood State is feared and respected throughout the wasteland for our military might in terms of combat effectiveness we are high above the dregs of the wasteland has to offer one man in power armors with ten unarmored soldiers if not more studying the previous engagements will help us improve our future combat doctrine so this will give me arm experience gain 50% and a 75% research bonus for land doctrine now the almost three months that I've been playing I have completed some research so I've moved on to doing my first refined warfare concentration force also done barrage balloons and I am moving uh, industrial planning for increased uh, production efficiency and I'm doing some decryption to give me an intel b b uh, bonus in battle this warrior training finished now I do not like doing any research ahead if I can avoid it and I also don't like researching things that I'm not planning on using so I'm now going to move over and something that's incredibly important for Old World Blues is your fire team, anti-tank rifles and dynamite so your fire team is a nice general purpose support or frontline weapon that can do some air attack it can uh, do some piercing and it's very good in defense anti-tank rifles are your primary way of uh, piercing through armor which most nations even the most basic troops will get so this is important and then dynamite is your main source of increasing your breakthrough and soft attack but for now I'm going to start off with anti-tank rifles 
So that is a, another focus completed. So I'm going to move on to my wasteland conscripts. It'll give me extra 500 manpower and also increases my recruitable population and my compliance growth speed, which is quite important. Wastelanders are a dime a dozen with little special or unique about them. Often short-sighted, brutish and too simple to understand the danger of technology. We often avoid them like the plague. Still, sometimes new blood is required. At times like these, we hunt the population for worthy candidates, often accepting proven and friendly wastelanders into our ranks. Now, my front line is looking a bit ragged. That is basically because units such as my militias are frankly useless, whereas my power armor is brilliant and my infantry is basically smack in between the two of them. I have gotten enough command power that I am able to add some traits onto my unit leader. Now he starts off with a terrain trait, which means I can unlock these two fantastic traits here. So improvisation expert first, because that will give me a move of it bonus on the land so my troops can move faster. Then I'm going to get Logistics Wizard to lower my uh, supply consumption by 10%. Now if you can get these on a commanding officer, the brilliant thing about it is that will affect all the armies that he has under his command. Then I'm going to add on to him because I have one more slot available, Pain Train, so that again my Heavy Special Forces will get extra attack and speed. And there we have it, another minor nation destroyed. Now this peace conference will be simpler because I don't have a navy. So I'm simply going to take all the states, submit my demands, and there we have it. Now, with that completed, I now have the chance of sitting back and upgrading my templates and starting production of my navy since I now have a dockyard. But that is also going to bring this tutorial to an end. I do hope that it has been helpful to you. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel for more no-nonsense playthroughs and guides for Hoss Van for Old World Blues. But I'd like to thank you all very much for watching and goodbye.